the main question we formulated for this video was, is China the next economic superpower? After China's Cultural Revolution ended in 1979, the country has been experiencing an economic boom. Impressive advances in the country's GDP have been taking place due to the reforms in the key aspects of the economy. Taking this into account, we can say that China will become the next leader of the economies of the world's economy, even surpassing the United States. After 1979, there was a phrase heard a lot in China. It was said by Dan Xiaoping. He said that, who cares if the cat is black or white, as long as it catches the mice. He tries to say this by showing China, trying to say China, that it doesn't matter if we change their infrastructure. It doesn't matter if we change some ideals, we open our economy, we open our boundaries and change some things that are not working there. As long as China's essence is not broke, is not changed. So, he was trying to say that China needs some changes basically in opening their boundaries, trying to invest in education, to make big exportations and basically he was doing economics reforms with free market there he it was his basic point with this he convinced the government and he do a lot of campaigns making that in China there were four trillion of ones invest in this change so with this he wanted to say that Investing this money, productivity will grow, economic standards and living standards will grow and will be better, and technological quality, technological procedures will make it easy to export and to talk about it. So, with all this, he was trying to say, he was saying, he was not trying to, but he was looking towards a China where he provides a good quality education, their boundaries open in an economic making that he, well not he, China will be a great export uh, along, along all the world. So this was the initial process he was trying to do. He, this change was started like in 1980 but it's not as until 1990 that you can see some changes, reasonable changes, evident changes in, the, in China. So you can see nowadays made in China proceed, you can see a lot of logos there that are the ones who show that China is growing in exports and showing that education, the investment they do in education is growing. Finally, they did a lot of process in roads because roads permit importation. With this, they can grow and they can be efficient in those ways. Then, we're going to talk about more education investments and also about uh, exportations. Okay, so continuing with what Sebastian was saying about the changes made during Deng Xiaoping's revolution, we can see that uh, one of the most important changes was in education. So during the 1980s, education was less than the 3% of the GDP. But then during the 1990s, around 2%. This happens because uh, the GDP grows exponentially. So the 2% is more than enough to, to get uh, with positive standards of education. And then from the year 2000 until the present, there was a growth in the investment in education until reaching a 3.6% of the GDP. This happens because the Chinese finally have understood that uh, education is a vital part for the economic growth and for competing against other countries in the economic field. So as they understand this, they're investing a lot of effort in trying to get the results above other countries 
And this can be seen, for example, in the PISA test results that were published just two years ago. So in reading, we can see that China is number one with a 556 score. Then in math, we can see that China is the number one. And in also in another in science, we can see that China is also above the rest of the countries with uh, 575 points. So that means that China is investing a lot of efforts and their efforts are going the right way. Then we can see another phenomenon that is related to education in China. This is the one about dragon children. Dragon children are the sons of parents who are who are awaiting to put all their money in order for their kids to go to school to the highest levels of education. They do not care if they spend a fortune, but they just want their kids to be very well educated. So Dragon Children basically study a 12 hours day of, of school and they're just the spirit of China nowadays because they're the ones imposing economy. But the motivation isn't over with Dragon Children because we can also see that Chinese have recognized that education will give them an advantage when they're working. For example, in the case of women, we can see that uh, there is more than 60% of Chinese women who are willing to ascend in the, in the working place to conditions that are better while just 50% of American women, of the United States women, that want to ascend in their, work, in their workplaces, right? And talking about the workforce, there are more women, more Chinese women, that are working right now than American women. So we can see that the Chinese finally have understood the advantage that education gives them uh, in terms of, of advancing quicker, faster, in an economic way. And they have understood that if they have a better education, they will also have a better economy. As Sebastian said, uh, Chinese government made some changes and in innovation in the way they work. One of these was in infrastructure that led to China to become one of the most important exportators of the world. Here we can see the China's main export partners that are the influencing economies of the world. We can see US, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, South Korea, Germany. Uh, here we, we can see the percentage of exportations that China gave to those, to those countries. What China does is that, they, the, is that they buy the primary sources from other countries, they produce them and innovate their, their objects and then they can sell them to, to other countries. As China is the most important exportator of the world, we can see that this is the base of his economy. We can see here, comparing the GDP of the US and, the G and the China's GDP, that throughout the years it has, a, it has been increasing in trillions every year. Uh, meanwhile, the one of US maintained like in the same rate between 14 and 16 trillion dollars. We expected with this uh, growth tendency that in less than 10 years the Chinese GDP is going to be equal or greater than the one of, of the US. As the GDP of China has been increasing throughout the years, we can say that their exportations are arriving to more countries. This happens because they're, they're, they are innovating in the products, in the way they made it and they distribute it. A consequence of this is that Germany is now the second most important exporter of the world because China has surpassed it. Now uh, it is possible to change the name of Made in China to the Innovative in China because now this is what this country is doing and their exportations are an important part of the economical, of the world's economy. So, 
What is China doing in order to become the world's largest economy over the United States? They are not just increasing the number of exportations or increasing the number of graduated students, but they are improving the quality of exportations and the quality of educations in order to have more countries that receive their, their products and in order to have better scientists or better engineers that can also make the country's GDP grow in, in great impressive numbers. So what this causes is that country, the country's GDP will, will grow so much to a point that China's um, economy will, in some point, we don't know, in some point of history, probably in 10 or 15 years, overcome United, the United States' economy. But why can't the, U the United States start uh, making reforms in terms of education or exploitation, just as China did? The problem is that China started this process 30 years ago, while the United States will be starting, starting right now. China is already in a very high like, standard in terms of education and, and exploitations, and this is making countries' economy grow in a very fast rate. So even if the United States start in implementing policies, new policies to improve their education systems and their exploitation systems and make the country's GDP start growing in a faster rate, it is not going to be as fast as China is growing right now and this will make, finally make that China will become better than the United States in some point of history and this answers to the question is China going to become the world's uh, largest economy? It, it will def definitely become.